everybody, and welcome to the Pontiac Silverdome. There is certainly electricity in the air. Pandemonium breaks loose, and Great Stadium, Bobby Lane goes back to throw. And for the ball, cutting inside. Touchdown! Let's go! Let's go! Why would you try to? Let's see what happens from that point on. Charlie Sanders, the Detroit line with a leopard stride. As we watch the Detroit Lion highlights, we'll see once more that there's no football like NFL pro football. The 66 season of Detroit Lions football began under a cloud of uncertainty. Barry Sanders' stunning retirement and a rash of key injuries had doubters declaring the Lions dead before Labor Day. But cynics and skeptics only provided the young Lions with inspiration. We're gonna do this together! We're gonna do it all the way! We're gonna do this together! It's our time! Let's go! Let's fight to the end! Detroit defeated some of the NFL's best on an improbable run to the postseason that uncovered new heroes. We've seen it so many times with Herman Moore. We see it with Jermaine Crowell. And provided some unforgettable moments. Fires and caught! Touchdown, Lions! One of the incredible comebacks for the Detroit Lions in their history, that's for sure. We never die! We never die! the play as a team, and that's what we did today. Team on three. One, two, three. Team! The NFL underwent a changing of the guard in 1999, and the Detroit Lions made their roar heard round the league. Now come in the dirt, Reno! One of the league's oldest franchises began a new era in 1999. Over the middle. Inspired by a new passion and a new pride. What a team this is this year, Jim. What more can you say about them? Uh, you said it. What a team. After an injury-filled training camp, the Lions opened the season in Seattle. Things went from bad to worse when a sprained knee sidelined Herman Moore in the first quarter. Bobby Ross was without a future Hall of Fame running back and the team's all-time leading receiver. But by halftime, quarterback Charlie Batch had a new favorite target. Batch tossed two of his three second quarter touchdowns to Moore's replacement, second year receiver Jermaine Crowell, to lead the Lions to their first opening day road win since 1986. In the home opener versus Green Bay a week later, Batch ignited another second quarter explosion. 35, 34, to the 20, the 15, the 10, five touchdown! Lions on the quick slam to Johnny Martin! Oh, my! Batch tossed long touchdown passes to Johnny Morton and David Sloan to put Detroit in front. Fires long over the middle, Sloan! Lions' old nemesis, Brett Favre, rallied the pack to a fourth-quarter lead. The Lions needed one more big play. Chuck Prefer and his special teams unit answered. There at the one, to the 10, to the 15, to the 20, to the 30. Harry Fair's 91-yard kickoff return set up the game-winning gallop. And it's a bootleg to the right. Charlie Batch with it, still with it. And he dives. Touchdown, Lions! In the right corner of the end zone. After just two games, the Lions had found their new offensive leader. And Lion fans had a new favorite player. Deep the throw. Long right sideline. Crowell. Got it. Touchdown. Lions. 
Bats' strong arm and uncanny escapability excites Detroit fans. But his uncommon composure delights quarterbacks coach Jim Zorn. How about that for boys by young Charlie Bat? He's disciplined and he's he's real stingy with the ball. He's stingy with the ball in the red zone and backed up and be aggressive in the middle. He doesn't have to go through some heroics to try to make things happen. We've got uh, guys like Herman Moore and Johnny Morton that can go up and, and get the ball, and sometimes uh, Charlie doesn't have to be as accurate. Charlie Batch, straight back to throw, and Herman Moore bobbled it, deflected, Martin caught it. Morton who catches it for a touchdown. Injuries force the Lions' offense to retool on the fly, but the passing game never touched the ground. Perot going long, Morton out there, baby, grab at the five. What he laid out for that one. Johnny Morton and Jermaine Crowell provided a pair of long ball threats, combining to catch 161 passes for over 2,400 yards. David Sloan posted career highs in all three receiving categories to earn his first Pro Bowl selection. But after a pair of losses even their record at two and two, the Lions needed an inspired effort to defeat the high-scoring Vikings. Big third down opportunity here. Cunningham, short drop left, there it is again, picked off! This will be taken back, Terry Fair, touchdown Lions! They tried it two in a row, and it didn't work that time. The defense stifled Minnesota with four sacks and three turnovers in the first half. Charlie Batch out at halftime. The Lions' fate rested with backup Gus Farratt. The Vikings also made a quarterback change, and the result was 23 unanswered points. Jeff George in relief of Randall Cunningham. Pump fake now goes to the end zone. Caught. Touchdown, Vikings. Chris Carter. How about this comeback? Yep. With less than two minutes remaining, the Vikings held a one point lead. But Bobby Ross knew the Lions didn't need to go far to have a chance to win. Jason Hansen's range can be in the 50 plus range at 50 to 55, so the Lions still got a good shot at him. Barat completed five passes on a short drive that put the game on the foot of Jason Hansen. After a penalty nullified his first attempt, Hansen calmly turned out the lights on Minnesota with his club record sixth field goal. Placement good. Kick, not a lot on it this time. But he got it! And the Lions lead him with seven seconds to go! In week seven, the Lions made their first ever trip to Carolina for a cat fight with the Panthers. In the midst of a crucial stretch of games, head coach Bobby Ross brought south a stonewall defense that even General Jackson would admire. Five times the Panthers had first and goal inside the Detroit Five. And five times the Lions turned them back. That's, that's goal line defense, boys. Yeah. Bootleg to the right, Burline, Chase gets away, stumbled, hit down, sack. What a job by this Lions defense. Oh, you bet. Every Carolina ball carrier found a stormy sea of blue and silver in an afternoon of goal line stands that included three sacks and a pair of turnovers. The defense answered the bell again a week later in front of a national television audience. Two of 
linebacker coach Gary Moeller's prized pupils combined to provide all the scoring the Lions would need. Rookie Chris Claiborne's first career sack was scooped up by Alan Aldridge and returned for six points. Once again, the defense refused to yield. For the first time in 16 years, the Lions had kept the opponent out of the end zone in consecutive games. On defense, the Lions are a gang of bare knuckle brawlers with a bone rattling style. Defensive coordinator Larry Pecatello's ear-pinning scheme produced an eye-popping 50 sacks and ranked among the league leaders in both fumbles forced and recovered. And a draw to Pittman, hit from behind, and fumble! Picked up with the last! Terry Fair picked up the ball to the 10 to the 5, and touchdown! Elias! Safety Ron Rice paced the secondary with a career-best five interceptions while leading tackler Stephen Boyd secured his first Pro Bowl selection. But the strength of this pride resides up front. Number 94, Luther Ellis, and number 98, James Jones, provide the push in the middle that had made the Lions one of the game's toughest against the run. Defensive ends Robert Porsche and Tracy Scroggins specialize in clobbering quarterbacks. The relentless Porsche corralled a career-high 15 sacks to earn his second Pro Bowl invitation. The defense had fueled a three-game win streak, but their biggest test would come at home against the eventual Super Bowl champion, St. Louis Rams. The Lions defense put the clamps on the record-setting Ram offense in the first half. But despite an inspired defensive effort, the Lions trailed by two and needed a second-half spark. Third quarter, deep drop into the end zone, and throws, and it's intercepted by Terry Fair! Terry Fair's interception set up a fourth down gamble that put the Lions in front. That is rolling the dice big time on that fourth down, going for it all. Give Sly Kroom, Bobby Ross, the offensive coach's credit. Now they're playing this game to win. But the Rams battle back to take the lead with less than three minutes to go. It's a bootleg. Oh, wide, wide open. open touchdown for the man who just checked in, Ryan oh, Tucker. No. The Motor City offense took a little time to get warm. And with just over a minute remaining, Detroit was faced with fourth and 26. What do you call here? Just try to find an open man. Hope for the best. Right from the gun. Got to throw it. Putting it up long for Crowell. He's got it! Heroics set up the game's seventh lead change with under half a minute remaining. Touchdown, Lions! Johnny Morton! With 28 seconds to go! I told you to come on here! I told you that! I told you to come again, That's what I told you! I'm glad you really are! you step up and be a man. There you go, baby! The Rams last chance was dashed by Ron Rice and at the midway point the Lions were kings of the NFC jungle. The Lions have done it. Holy mackerel what a game. One of the incredible comebacks for the Detroit Lions in their history. That's for sure. Yeah. 
Super job. But let's hang together. Let's hang together. We're the best in the NFC right now. Yeah. All right, but, but it's only halfway. It's only halfway. Let's keep fighting. We'll see you tomorrow. Great job. In October 1965, Motown was moving to the sounds of 15 year old Stevie Wonder. While at Briggs Stadium, Coach Harry Gilmer's Lions intercepted six passes on the way to defeating the Washington Redskins 14 to 10. Not one of Bobby Ross's current Lions were alive the last time Detroit beat the Skins. But their week 13 showdown was significant for a different reason. So get no bigger than this, baby. Playoff, baby. This the vacation right here. Big implications. For a game with playoff implications, the young Lions turned on the postseason intensity. After being held to just a field goal, the Lions erupted for 17 points in the last three and a half minutes of the first half. Rot looking to throw, pump fake. Now he'll go to Herman Moore. Got it, touchdown, Lions! Herman just schooled Champ Bailey on an out and up cut. And the rookie couldn't handle it. The biggest blow came from the newest Lion. Desmond Howard to the left side, fields at the 32, dodges a tackler at the 40, 45, 50, left side, 45, 40, 35, 30, he's gone! He's gone! The Lions' 10-point cushion wasn't quite as comfortable after the Redskins scored on their first possession of the second half to give the street light. And just like that, the Washington Redskins are back to within three. Everything else is still so. We'll get that back on offense. All right, we'll just get that back. Keep doing what we're doing. We're fine up front. We're fine up front. Just keep coming. Once again, the Lions' defense rode to the rescue. James Jones spearheaded an assault that rang up four sacks and three turnovers in the fourth quarter. Pressure, sack, fumble, oh, no, no, no. Ellis has it! Touchdown, Lions! And he does the leap into the stands! The resounding win ended a 35-year drought and helped the Lions secure an unlikely postseason berth. But in a wild card rematch five weeks later, injuries had reduced the Lions to a shell of the team that so convincingly defeated the Redskins. Lot to throw, and he is belted. We never saw Craig Jones, the left linebacker. Missed opportunities taught the young Lions a painful lesson about postseason football. A pair of late touchdowns provided the Lions with the silver lining in an otherwise gray afternoon. Well, the last play of the season for the Lions is a touchdown. Something to build on, I guess. 
Edge Pro Gel presents the Detroit Lions' ultimate performance of the century. The Lions advanced to the 1957 championship game under first-year head coach George Wilson. But with star quarterback Bobby Lane out with a broken ankle, the Lions were directed by backup Tobin Roth. Roth tossed four touchdown passes and ran for another to lead Detroit to a franchise record 59 points and their third championship of the decade. Without any further ado, we'd like to introduce uh, the newest Lion. The Lions' number one off-season priority was to improve the running game. I'm a part of a puzzle here. They've got big-time players here, and I'll just fit in as a part of the puzzle. James Stewart provides a corporal component to offensive coordinator Sylvester Croom's puzzle. A 230-pound bulldozer in cleats. Last season, Stewart hammered out a career best with over 900 yards and 13 touchdowns. Stewart is just part of Bobby Ross's plan to bring Smash Mouth football back to the Motor City. With the uh, 20th pick in NFL Draft 2000, the Detroit Lions select Stalker McDougal, tackle Oklahoma. The offensive line has added over 700 pounds of pure power in Stalker McDougal, an All-American from Oklahoma, and Aaron Gibson, whose rookie season was lost to a shoulder injury. The Detroit Lions are beginning their eighth decade of NFL football. But from Dutch Clark to Charlie Batch, one thing hasn't changed. Games are won and lost in the trenches. In 1999, the Lions played with a new passion and a new pride. This season, they have a new style and new expectations. some of the game's brightest young stars and a core of pro bowlers on both sides of the ball, the Lions will be in the thick of the championship chase well into the next century.